Hi, today we're going to talk about family trees. In biology, we call a family tree a pedigree chart. So let's take a look at what the symbols mean when we're trying to represent who's related to who. Males are usually represented by squares on a pedigree chart, and females are represented by circles. If the circles are empty, this means that the person's not carrying the trait that we're looking for. If the circles are filled in or the squares are filled in, this means that this person carries the trait that we're looking at. Say we're looking at hemophilia. This person would be carrying hem would have hemophilia. And so would this person. We can also show that someone's carrying a trait but doesn't actually have that particular trait by shading in half of their circle or their square. We call these people carriers. They're not, they don't have whatever gene we're looking for, but they're carrying it and they may give it to the next generation of children. Relationships on family trees are indicated by lines. A horizontal line between a male and a female indicates that those two people are married. If you look to the right, you'll see that over here we have two people who are married and then we have a bracket that represents their children. They have two girls and one boy as represented by the circles and the square. You'll also notice that there's Roman numerals off to the right. Roman numeral one means that these are the parents, they're the first generation. And Roman numeral two means that these are the children, that they're the second generation. We can show many generations on a family tree if we keep going. Here's an example of a family tree. So we have Mary, who's married to Carlos. They have three children, Jose, Alex, and Lucy. Lucy gets married to Steve, and together they have two children, Hannah and Brenda. So that's how you make a family tree. It's pretty easy when you think about it. So how do we tell if traits are dominant or recessive on a family tree? You could write out a genotype for every single person on the family tree, and that's certainly possible. But for now, we're going to look at some general patterns. If you look at this one on the left, this pedigree has three generations. Somebody in every generation is affected by the trait that we're looking for. So that means that this trait is probably going to be a dominant trait, since it shows up every generation that we have children. On the other hand, if we look on the chart on the right, we'll see that we have somebody affected in the first generation, but no one is affected in the second generation, and then the trait shows up again in the third generation. So this trait skips a generation. We could probably assume that this trait is recessive because it doesn't show up all the time. Last, we have to see if these traits might be sex-linked or if they're autosomal traits. An autosome is just a body chromosome, and X, the sex-linked chromosomes would be the X and the Y. So let's take a look. The one on the left, we can see that all of the squares are shaded in, which means that all the males in the tree are affected. But none of the circles are filled in, so none of our females are affected. It's probably safe to say that this is a sex-linked trait, and in this case, it's probably an X-linked trait. If we were to see if someone was a carrier, say mom was a carrier, her circle might be halfway filled in. On the right hand side, we have three females and one male affected. Okay? If both genders are affected, or they're affected about evenly, then it's probably safe to say that this is an autosomal trait. All right, that's all I've got for pedigree charts. You should practice making them on your own, and in fact, you could even make your own family tree if you want to. If you need help, go back again and watch this video. You can pause it as many times as you need to until you get the idea. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks!